Welcome back. I want this video to serve as an introduction to the next two weeks of this course, weeks three and four. I want to make sure that you can see clearly how each of these weekly exercises are meant to help you build a successful exploratory research project. So we spent last week generating interest in a topic that has some kind of exigence. And by exigence, I mean that the topic calls for action. It has urgency. It's relevant right now. And then we helped each other turn that topic into a complex and divergent research question. Now, with that done, we turn to conducting research. And that's where the library navigation exercise comes in. I'm actually scripting your research process a bit so that you're sure to lurk, look in several different directions for really good resources to help you come closer to an answer to that question you're asking. So as a reminder, let me step back a little bit. This first major project, the Exploratory Research Project, will be completed in two separate parts. There will be a research log and a reflective essay, and both parts are due at the end of week five. In a perfect world, the library navigation exercise that you might have started last week but certainly are working on now, if you look pretty carefully, it's going to give you nearly all of the 12 sources that you need to populate your research log. Where I'm asking you to have at least 12 sources with three separate mediums, and two of them must be academic or scholarly sources. Part two of this project asks you to choose the top five sources from that research log, the ones that best help you answer your inquiry question, and then write about those, how you came closer to an answer to that inquiry question. You write about that in the reflective essay. Let me give you a few examples of how other students come to this task. So one former student of mine was a Harley writer and saw almost um, only older white dudes on Harleys and that really piqued her curiosity so she began considering that curiosity as a researcher does and she ended up asking and researching why Harley Davidson doesn't appeal to a more culturally diverse group of people. Here's another one. Another student after having recently started a philosophy class wanted to ask um, exactly what existentialism is so she explored that philosophical concept and specifically how it applied in her life. I even had one student, after battling with his parents over his choice to stop attending church, ask, do I even believe in God? Um, or another student who asked this great question based off something a friend had said to him, are there really more crazy people now than there were 50 years ago, or are we just now starting to notice? The thing is, we're all researchers because we all have questions of the world that matter in our daily lives. The examples are endless. But I want you to notice something. These students didn't ask questions that had a simple yes or no answer. Their questions were not only personally significant, which gave them reason to keep researching and writing, but they were also complex, divergent, no simple answers. They really had to grapple with ideas in order to better understand their questions and the answers to those questions. So make sure you're reading and rereading that assignment sheet and the samples for all the details. By the end of week five, you'll have both parts, the log and the reflective essay, ready to turn in. But between now and week five, we're going to do some writing exercises that help illuminate important features of writing research, like integration. That's just weaving others' ideas in with your own. You've done this before, summarizing, paraphrasing, quoting. But what I want you to begin thinking about is how to integrate with thoughtful rhetorical intent. We're going to work on plagiarism and common knowledge. We're going to go beyond those simple rules of copy and pasting um, regulations into the gray area between integration and plagiarism. Assimilation. This is probably the single most important element of this research reflective essay. That's how you do more than just regurgitate the ideas of others. It's the single most important element because it's how it ref you reflect your ability to think critically about your topic. Finally, citation. And citation just matters. Um, citation contributes to our ethos as a writer. It's how we prove that we're being fully forthright and transparent and we use thoughtful sources. So these are the features that I'm going to be assessing when I read and grade the reflective essay. So I want you to pay attention to the details of the exercises that we do over the next couple of weeks. For example, when I return that assimilation, exercise to you, I'm going to highlight all the ways that you can achieve successful assimilation in research writing. 
Be sure you're reviewing the comments that I return to you at the end of each week for each and every assignment. I rely really heavily on that feedback comment box to help show you how this assignment works together to ensure your success with writing and all future assignments in this class. They've been really carefully scaffolded to help you have success with each and every writing project. I appreciate your time in watching this. Don't hesitate ever to ask questions. Thanks. Enjoy your week.